right guys i'm gonna try and fit this in before it starts to get dark out the sun has already gone down so we're gonna try and knock this out but i have been asked by quite a few people uh what the what the specific setup is on the raptor so i'm just going to do a quick video on what all is done what i have uh, as for the camping equipment or the overlanding equipment and then uh everyone should have a general idea of, of what's all done. So let's try this. All right, so I'm not gonna go super in depth on um, everything in here, but I can probably make a separate video on what's specifically in the crates. But basically that right there is my camping crate. That right there is my cooking crate. And then right here is just my quick and easy meal uh, dry goods. So basically I have soup, um, you know, mountain house meals, uh, my jet boil, um, a couple cans of, uh, SpaghettiOs, you know, just a, a couple of random things like that for when I don't really want to cook, but I want to eat. So other than that in here, I do have my leveling blocks, uh, for leveling the vehicle when it is not super, uh, level and they are significantly easier than trying to find, you know, rocks that can do the job. Right under that is the recovery equipment. So in there, I do have my winch remote, a kinetic rope. Um, I have a tree hugger or a tree saver, whatever they're called. Um, and then a couple shackles, basically. So soft shackles and hard shackles. So that's basically what is in my recovery bag. Um, other than that, I do always use my, or I don't always use it, but I always carry my chainsaw. Uh, it is a Milwaukee M18 chainsaw. And I just found this cheap bag on Amazon um, that kind of houses it. It's absolutely phenomenal. I have zero complaints on the actual chainsaw itself. However, the one complaint I do have is that the bar oil leaks out of it uh, pretty badly. So I did find a, a bag. Um, I chose to do a soft bag instead of a, a hard case just because that was a little bit more... Um, malleable in trying to figure out where everything was going to go in here. So uh, other than those two things, um, the I have my chair. This is my favorite chair. Um, you can kind of have a general idea of what it looks like right there, but uh, that is one of my favorite camping chairs. I do have this and then I have the front runner uh, chairs as well. Front runner chairs, significantly easier to set up and take down. This one does take a little bit more work. However, this one is significantly more comfortable than the front one ones as well. So uh, next I have a just a general 20 pound uh, tank of um, propane. Uh, I use this for mainly the uh, fireplace, which I had already actually taken out. It's right there. I have the Ignic fire can or fire box or whatever it's called. Um, but I mainly use it for that. I do have an adapter hose as well uh, to hook it up to my uh, jet boil base camp uh, stove. So it kind of kills two birds with one stone. But it, honestly, its main use is um, the, the fire pit itself. So what goes right here uh, is my utilities bin, basically. Uh, you can tell that it has a big hole cut out in it. And that is where my diesel heater sits. So this is your standard, you know, Chinese diesel heater. Um, I got it from Vever or Vever, V-E-V-O-R.com. Um, I'll be a hundred percent honest. I didn't have high hopes for this thing. Um, I saw it on a YouTube video, um, Oxfoot, I believe, or something like that. But I saw it on a YouTube video where he kind of made this contraption and, and how it actually sits on the tire itself. And I really honestly didn't have high hopes. I took this on a couple trips last year, um, a pretty long week long one that was actually from Wisconsin all the way to Las Vegas. Um, and this thing has by far just blew me away. Um, to be a hundred percent honest, uh, I haven't had one single mess up with it. Uh, the controller, I did find a pretty decent video on actually figuring it out and, and what all it does. Uh, and what the controls are, but as for the way that I'm using it, it absolutely works phenomenal. It's very efficient, very good on fuel. Um, I mean, it has a, a one gallon, uh, I believe, tank. Um, 
and this one gallon tank run on low, which low is absolutely plenty uh, to heat the iCamp or SkyCamp Mini. Um, but low, this one gallon will, I mean, if I go to bed at 8 p.m. and wake up at 11 a.m. the next morning, there'll still be some left over. It's a, extremely efficient uh, and it's, it's very warm. There are a couple of little tricks to the trade though. So maybe I'll make a separate video on that. Um, but beyond that, this thing is awesome. I absolutely love this. Uh, even with my future setups, I'm probably gonna work this into it uh, only because it's done very, very well. Um, I know there's you know a couple other heaters out there uh, like Wabasto heaters and the Dickinson like fireplace and stuff like that for my future setup. Um, but this thing is absolutely great. It, I camped with it at eight or 9,000 feet elevation and camped up there and it did great. It didn't have any, any hiccups. It fired right up right away, stayed running all night and it's done very, very well. So, um, there is the hose that is run all the way up to here held in place right there with a bungee cord and then it's just run up into this window of the tent so um then basically we get to the next part which is the iCamper SkyCamp Mini 3.0 so I actually bought this on pre-order before it first came out and this rooftop tent is by far one of my favorite rooftop tents uh it's incredibly easy to set up it's incredibly easy to take down um, and then beyond that, it's very comfortable. Um, the mattress is not the most comfortable thing in the world. Obviously, I don't think any rooftop tent mattress is comfortable. So if somebody does tell you that one is, you know, comfortable like a bed at home, then they're lying. However, this one is great. Um, I, I did replace this with a uh, air mattress off Amazon. Uh, it's like a half memory foam, half air and it's four inches thick and if you actually deflate it um you can fit a ton of bedding up here so this is the mattress um i can i can put a link below on which one specifically this is but it works great um i just use a uh, the lighting's horrible in here um i just use a little battery powered pump with a little diy to uh inflate um, but mainly to deflate this helps by far to suck all the air out of the mattress and gets it super flat so um, i'm not going to go super far into the tent but you can see that uh there is a full uh double it's actually the eye camper brand uh double sleeping bag right there that is a normal memory foam pillow like at home with the pillowcase on it that is a full size um fleece blanket and then that is a down blanket generally with this um, diesel heater I don't even need to get in the sleeping bag I just put the sleeping bag down and lay on top of that and use the blankets and I just sleep in boxers and a t-shirt so powering um, there's normally I did install lights all up in here uh, you can kind of see them right there and right there and then they run up and around but on this trip I must have done something that uh, severed the connection on the actual light strips themselves because only a small portion of them turns on over there but um this is what i power the um lights uh charging my phone if i need to or my ipad um as well as the diesel heater so um the actual wires from the diesel heater run up through um to the pass-through that's right there and then um, they come up into here and then it's just a normal um, 12 volt cigarette lighter but this is the um, EcoFlow Pro uh, R600 so uh, this thing's absolutely great um, this thing powers the diesel heater I mean a full night of sleep running the diesel heater all night uh, it uses about 15% of this so um, and this is uh, a 600 I'm guessing I actually think it's 700 watt hours, but um, it does say R600 on it. Um, I'll correct it on the screen if it if it is, but uh, this thing's great. It can literally charge my MacBook Pro, uh, my phone, my iPad, and there's still plenty of power left over in the morning. So, um, and it's not, you know, huge. So, um, other than that, that's basically uh, inside the tent. Um, let me turn on the 
light on this thing real quick. There we go. So um, that's uh, kind of a pro from this thing, but you can see that the um, heater hose for the diesel heater is just coming out right there. Um, and then you can see that there's the, the fleece blanket, the down blanket, a uh, full size pillow, and then the eye camper um, sleeping, double sleeping bag is, is chilling under there. And with, uh, with all of that bedding in there, uh, this does close up just fine. It's, it's not even hard to close up. You don't have to, you know, sit on it or anything like that. Uh, it closes up easy and that is with all of that bedding in there. So, um, the air mattress is a game changer. I know eye camper has one, but, um, it was a little bit expensive for my taste. So, uh, this one was, I don't even remember how much it was. I think it was like 150 bucks, uh, or maybe a, yeah, it was it's something like that for the double size or the queen size. So that thing is phenomenal. And then I have a, um, a, uh, futon sheet that I found actually, cause it, it fully encloses it all the way around. It isn't just, you know, a sheet that goes over the top, like a fitted sheet. It goes all the way around and then zips up on one side. So, um, that way I don't get the mattress dirty or gross and I can just take it off and wash it. So I do have all the, the windows closed up on this right now because as you can see, it is, uh, it's a, a little cold out here in Utah right now. Um, I am just north of Moab, um, probably about three hours south of Salt, Salt Lake City. And um, the, the Mexican wilderness, I believe that's where I am, um, or right outside of it anyway. Um, this is just some BLM land that I found using Onyx. And um, pretty close to the highway, I do have to get up really early tomorrow to go drop this off at Rocky Road Outfitters in Herber, Utah. Um, but anyway, uh, back to, you know, everything going on here. Uh, so I, I do have all of the uh, windows uh, closed up because it is kind of cold out and I don't, uh, I don't need them open. Uh, it's not super sunny or anything like that for the same reason I don't have my awning open. But with that being said, I have the Billy Bars uh, eight inch uh, bed rack system and that is what all of all of this is mounted to uh, Billy bars is by far one of my favorite bed racks. I know there's a couple out there that are very similar um, Billy bars is a awesome small business though um, they're, they're run by really down-to-earth people the customer support is amazing and uh, they're, they're honestly their pricing isn't isn't too bad either um, I installed this over a year ago and I have done multiple trips with it going through the desert, uh, you know, just going through everything. Uh, every time I've checked the bolts that are holding it to the inside of the bed, um, it is nice. Every time I've checked the, uh, the bolts, um, holding it to the uh, bedside, it, they're always tight. Uh, this thing is phenomenal and I love the different uh, mounting solutions that they have come up with. So um, anyway, the, the, like I said, the mounting rack, they do offer two different sizes. They offer a five inch one, which sits very close to the tonneau cover, then the eight inch one, which lifts it up a little bit more. So uh, the main reason that I looked into these style um, bed racks is because I wanted to maintain a tonneau cover. As much as this is a soft roll up one and you know, if somebody really wanted to, they could just take a knife and um, cut into it and get into my stuff. But I, I do like the shelter from, you know, mud or snow or sand. Sand is iffy. It, it doesn't always uh, keep sand out very well, but um, I, I, I like just having that, you know, extra um, layer of security for the uh, top of the bed. So um, Billy Bars, and there's, like I said, there's a couple other companies that do allow you to maintain tonneau covers, but um, I looked into tonneau covers and again, I was kind of on a budget setup with this, but I'll be 100% honest with you. Um, this right here uh, is a, a Tiger tonneau cover. Uh, it's a soft roll. They do have a couple of hard ones and trifolds and stuff like that, but uh, soft roll allows me to actually open it with this on. A trifold obviously would hit the, the bed rack. 
but I bought this on Amazon for 200 bucks, I think, and I am absolutely blown away. So I got the tonneau cover before I got the bed rack and everything, and I live in Wisconsin, so it snows quite a bit, and sometimes it's light and powdery snow, but the majority of the time it is heavy, um, you know, heavy, heavy, heavy snow. Um, and uh, this thing did great. It, it does have the uh, reinforced um, top right there. And then it, it, it's just like any other, you know, soft, soft roll uh, tonneau cover. It has the Velcro right there. But this thing has held up. I've had this for over a year. It's done great. I set things up here all the time when I'm cooking or, you know, stuff like that. And it's, it's pulled tight. Um, and then it has, uh, ambidextrous, uh, that was one of the reasons that I bought this over the other brands. It has an ambidextrous, um, release to actually pop the tonneau cover, uh, up. So most brands that I found just have one, like it'll be on the left side or it'll be on the right side. So this one actually has a cable that runs the entire length. So regardless of which side of the truck you're on, you can open it. So I absolutely love this tonneau cover. For the money, it is by far the best tonneau cover that you can get, in my opinion. All right, um, next up, we have the Mountain Hatch insert. Um, I'm not entirely sure that they still make this for the 2009, for, uh, 2009 through 14 F-150s. Um, they do make it for the newer models, but I honestly haven't seen it um, on their site, uh, at least advertised for the um, this, this generation F-150. Um, but they make them for all makes and models. This thing is an absolute game changer. Obviously, I cook back here. Um, you know, you just bring a Clorox wipe or something like that, sanitize this off, and all of a sudden, you know, you have this whole entire workspace to use as a cutting board, um, you know, put bare meat on it, uh, season things. It just, it turns into a, you know, whole four foot long cutting board. And I absolutely love this. This is a game changer. If you have a truck, um, and I know there's a ton of companies out there that that make something similar to this. Um, but as far as my understanding, these guys are kind of the OG when it comes to um, these uh, tailgate cutting boards or tailgate inserts, whatever you want to call them. Super easy to install. It's literally one, two, three, four, five, six bolts. Um, I, I did have to lose the... Um, I don't even know the pole that you would get up. Um, I, everyone always calls them stripper poles, but uh, the pole that comes on the factory Ford right here to help you get up with the step. And the step does still work. It's still here and I can still pull it out and use it to get up into the bed or something like that. So, uh, but the, the stripper pole does have to get deleted, which I was completely fine with because it was just more of a pain in the ass and in the way uh, than anything else. So, um, these guys are absolutely phenomenal mountain hatch. Um, they are made in the USA. They're made in house. Um, and it was a direct fit. Everything worked, uh, very, very well. Like I said, super easy to install. Um, I, I wasn't, uh, it was, it was a no brainer for me as much as, you know, it, it is a little bit expensive. I think it was like 250 bucks. Uh, it was a hundred percent worth it in my opinion. All right, uh, next up we have this. Uh, this is the uh, the last US bag company. Um, this is, uh, you know, I saw this on a YouTube video. Um, Conquest Overland uh, actually did a video and it's funny because he now uh, works at iCamper or maybe he did before, but um, he did a, a video reviewing this bag and I knew right away that I, I had to have it. Uh, I really enjoyed how the bag looked. Um, I enjoy that it's just kind of a backpack for the back of the tailgate, um, but the quality is insane. Um, you know, I, I use this uh, literally to put trash, firewood, um, anything in, and it's great. Um, it is really expensive for what it is, to be honest. Uh, it does come with a cutting board, and. You know, basically you just buy a really expensive bottle opener and uh, you get a, a free uh, trash bag or a backpack for trash roo. You know, I know trash roo is a brand, but whatever you want to call it. Um, this thing is great. Um, 
I, I really enjoy the fact that you can um, zip the whole front down. Uh, it really helps spraying it out. Like if you had something spill with the trash or anything, um, it really helps just being able to open the front and get everything out. So uh, that is the last US bag company. Uh, I believe it's called Oscar's Hideout. Um, very, very, very good bag. Um, I, I would definitely recommend this to anyone looking for, uh, you know, this style of, of bag for a truck or the back of a spare tire or whatever. So um, beyond that, uh, we have the water port. Uh, this is the Weekender. Um, this is eight gallons. I do not have any water in here right now uh, because this is the middle of winter and I didn't want to have to deal with freezing or anything like that. But this thing works great. Um, I've kind of fabricated my own mounts to make it work with the spacing that I had for the billy bars right there. But this thing is fantastic. Um, it comes with its own hose and spray nozzle and uh, everything uh, to hook it up to like your hose at home to fill it with water. And uh, this thing is great. Not necessarily for drinking water. I still bring like um, bottled water for cooking and stuff like that. But um, for dishes or I'm not going to... I guess you could shower with it, but uh, mainly for dishes or spraying things off or spraying your feet off, your boots off, or, you know, if you had a day at the beach and you want to, you know, rinse your legs off from all the sand, this thing is great. Uh, it holds water pressure really, really well. It's super easy to um, get water pressure again uh, if you have onboard air. So this is just a normal Schrader valve for like a tire that you can hook up to a tire inflator and put air into it. So absolutely love that thing. Um, this is a newer edition. Um, this is an OBS 270 awning um, with the Billy Bar's uh, proprietary. Um, this is Billy Bar branded, their awning mount. So uh, this is one of the uh, cheaper awnings on the market, but I'll be honest, I was pretty impressed with the quality. Um, I think I paid right around 900 bucks for this thing. And um, it's, a, it's a pretty impressive awning. Um, it does come with legs and stuff like that, but you don't necessarily need to open the legs. It, it does self-support itself, and it goes literally all the way from, like, this mirror, uh, the side mirror on the driver's side, all the way around to right about here. So um, it, it does cover a lot of space, and I know they sell you know, walls and stuff like that for them. But uh, when it's snowing or raining or um, wind is not necessarily its friend, but when it's snowing or raining or anything like that, this thing is amazing. Um, I will make sure to have an awning on my vehicle uh, anytime I go out in the future. Next up, we have the Roto Packs. Uh, these are the three gallon containers. Um, these are great. Um, it's kind of a love-hate relationship with them. Um, I do have the Billy Bars uh, angled, or they're small model Molly panels right here. Um, so it does kind of put these, obviously, in the way of uh, mud slinging from the tires. However, um, it gets it... I don't know if I can... Yeah, there we go. They are uh, very, very close, and because they are at an angle, I have gone over stuff rough enough where these will hit the side of the bed, which I'm not the, the biggest fan of, to be honest. But other than that, they're great. Um, you know, they're just, I mean, it's a, it's a gas container, a mountable gas container. So I did uh, two threes instead of the, you know, one big four that would cover both of the space, just because there's, you know, you get two more gallons of gas. So, um, I do have the, uh, I found these on Amazon. Um, they were, you know, different spouts. I'm not a huge fan of the um, safety nozzles or whatever they're called that come with these. So um, they both do have those, but I'm waiting for uh, my metal ones from, um, there's a, a company that makes uh, different actual nozzles that go into these that work a ton better. And I'm waiting for those to come in because these, um, as you can kind of see right there, um, these do leak a little bit. So that's that side. That kind of covers all of that. There's my homemade uh, trash can, basically. Um, over here is just, I have uh, a pair or a set of two 
um, of Max Tracks, and then I, I Billy Bars does offer mounts, uh, but I custom made these with the Max Tracks uh, branded locking pins right there. So um, that's basically the entire camping setup in the in the bed of the truck. There is absolutely nothing wrong with this setup. It's it's great. It's super comfortable. It's warm uh, for literally four season camping. It is. Uh, Jan it's the middle of January, 2023 right now, and I am camping in Utah. Um, it is 20, I think it's 25 degrees outside. Once the diesel heater fires up, it it's fine. Um, you'll sleep like a baby inside and won't have to worry about heat all night. So I'll kind of just do a quick once over of everything inside the truck. That way you can just have an idea of how the interior of the truck is set up. So on the passenger side, um, I do have a Dometic fridge. Um, this is the CFX 55 IM. I did the I did this specific fridge mainly because it made ice and it fit in this location. I'm a big whiskey drinker, so ice is kind of a necessity, but this thing is fantastic. There's plenty of room for whatever you may whatever you may need. Um, it isn't dual zone, which would be nice, but it does the job just fine. So fridge is right here. Um, I run the fridge off of this Jackery 1500. This thing's great. It's a powerhouse, like quite literally. But uh, every once in a while, I'll plug it into the truck when I'm driving and uh, let that charge back up. But this right here will power this fridge for like three, four days without even needing to plug that into any sort of power. So I basically do that because I didn't want the running the fridge just off the truck i don't want the truck battery draining down at all a because i don't have a dual battery set up for this and b um i didn't want it shutting on and off with the truck i, I just want to make sure that it 100 percent stays on all the time um the only the only problem that i've had with this is the actual power cord for the fridge uh which you can see right there um the the actual cigarette lighter adapter end that came with it um it was a shitty design to be 100% honest but that failed so there's actually just like one from O'Reilly's that's um crimped on to the end of the wires so that is the fridge setup uh right here um light is going away pretty quickly but right here I do have the ARB twin compressor that is mounted right there with the switch up by the dash um and that does give me onboard air so I'll walk around to the other side so you can kind of see this, but the actual connector for the airline is right there next to my license plate. We'll go to the front door, creaky door. This is basically my setup. I just have uh, camera gear right here. Um, always have a snack for road trips. And then, uh, I mean, this is just the interior of a 2014 F-150 basically. But passenger side, there's not a whole lot going on, but I do keep the EcoFlow up here and charging when I'm driving somewhere, like when I'm done camping. I do have a Blue Ridge Overland uh, dump pouch, uh, but it's actually mounted to this molly panel, and this is basically my, my trash uh, for inside the vehicle. So uh, real quick, since light is going away very quickly, we'll go over to the driver's side and show you that. Okay, so I just have my custom setup basically. This is where I keep this phone actually that I do all my recording with mounted. I use the quad lock system that keeps it charged and mounted. That's an iPad Air. Uh, that's what I use for all of my GPS and music and movies in the tent and stuff like that. And then I, I have a Garmin InReach Explorer Plus, I believe they're called. So that is my kind of backup GPS if I don't have service or you know, I would never go backcountry or off-grid without one of those so then up here um, You really can't see anything uh, I will go ahead and grab This guy Right up here. I just have a uh, multi-tool. I have a flashlight um, I do have my GMRS radio uh, hardwired and the cord can plug into either side of the center console so if the passenger is doing any of the comms they can do that 
So that is that. I do have a pistol mount underneath and that is basically the driver's seat setup. All right, moving to the back side. We'll just do this real quick so that you can see because I have lost light. So I carry this bin back here whenever I do any camping. It basically just has my like my JBL pill to listen to music. Um, that's my toiletries bag by step 22. I always keep some melatonin gummies to help me sleep. There's just a bunch of little random odds and ends in there. So beyond that, I there's my backpack that I keep my laptop and stuff in. Uh, like I said, bottled water. Um, there is my um, air hose and the digital uh, tire inflator for inflating the tires when I do air back up. I do use these guys right here to air down. And then um, this is my bag of clothes. Uh, this is a North Face bag. I absolutely love it. This is one of their duffels. It has backpack straps on it, so I absolutely love this thing. This right here is uh, what's it called? The, the Thunder Box. Um, this is my toilet. I do have toilet bags in there as well because there are some places in Moab and um, other places where you are actually required to travel with those because uh, they don't want you shitting in the... Um, public lands I guess so that is that I do carry that and if you've ever been on a trip and when you need to go you need to go and hovering is not the most pleasant pooping experience of of uh, my life so I did end up getting one of these these are great again they're a little expensive too but this thing for as thin as it actually and it, it looks thicker but it's actually like an inch thin um, cause I do have some of those like toilet bags and stuff like that in there, but this thing's great. Uh, fantastic toilet. It's one of my favorites. And then, uh, one thing I didn't show, I, I do have my tool roll right there. That's a Rhino USA bag. And then it's just filled with basically anything I could need to fix anything on this truck on the side of the trail, to be honest. Um, you know, obviously I'm not going to be doing any major repairs, but to, kind of cobble something back together to get it to a shop or someplace that I can actually do a proper repair. Everything in that tool roll will be able to do that. So other than that, that's basically the Raptor. I do have uh, Baja Designs Pro uh, fogs and Baja Designs Pro pillar lights or ditch lights. Um, behind the grill, I do have a Cali raised LED light bar. That thing's fantastic. Um, right here, I do have an open road 13,000-pound uh, winch with a Factor 55 Ultra Hook. And other than that, I mean, honestly, the exterior is pretty stock. It's actually going in tomorrow. Um, working with Rocky Road Outfitters, they are making a set of sliders, like true sliders, for uh, Gen 1 Raptors. They do make them for Gen 2s already, but I got with them about making some for a 2009 through 14 F-150 or 2010 through 14 Raptor. And uh, I'm dropping the truck off tomorrow morning and they are going to actually adapt their already made sliders to this platform. Right now it's just got some cheap um, sliders on it that I found there yeah, as you can see they're bent to hell already you know honestly these running boards I'm gonna call them right here is their their first priority is to be a running board their second priority is to be a slider but they do sacrifice themselves when they become a slider these are, are getting replaced by true proper sliders other than that everything's like I said it's, it's pretty stock wheels are just methods with uh, Falcon Wild Peak AT3Ws, um, stock size. There's still 35s. I will probably be switching to 37s coming up. And then suspension is stock in the front. Um, it's still on low perch, which is kind of why the truck is a little lower in the front. Uh, in the rear, I do have Icon Vehicle Dynamics uh, springs, the multi-rate springs for the back, the Leafs, with stock shocks all the way around. So in the future, this is going to get a major upgrade with uh, some uh, icon full suspension to give it a little lift and when I do that I'll, I'll do 37s as well. Now that it is completely dark out I'm gonna turn some lights on and get back to hanging out tonight. I'm probably gonna climb up in the tent because like I said it is chilly right now. So other than that that is the setup for 
this 2014 Raptor. Um, there's not many people that overland with these, so I'm super excited for what this truck is about to bring to the table. Um, you know, obviously it's not the most practical overlander in the world. It's a 6.2 liter V8 that drinks fuel like it is an alcoholic. However, they're very comfortable inside and I absolutely love this truck. Definitely gets the job done and they're tanks. I mean, I've, I've genuinely never gotten stuck with this. This truck has actually done Hell's Revenge in Moab and this truck belongs absolutely nowhere near Hell's Revenge. Um, everything about it doesn't work. It's a long wheelbase. The departure and, and approach angles aren't the greatest in the world, but yes, they're better than like a normal F-150, but they're still not, you know, Jeep equivalent. This truck blows me away. Every time I go out in it, and it doesn't matter if it's mud or rocks or um, like the slick rock in Moab or just cruising down the highway. It's it's super comfortable and I am very happy with my choice for my vehicle to do these adventures in. And like I said in one of my previous videos, there is going to be a huge update for this to wear all of this stuff. And that's why I'm doing this uh, setup video right now uh, is going to go away. So it's getting a, a total makeover and I'm excited to show you guys what the what the next step is in this build. So have a good day and I will see you guys later.